Many of you know, I just got back from a four-day fishing trip down in Galveston, Texas, where we caught a bunch of big fish, sharks, all kinds of stuff. And I came back to a question from a subscriber, a very interesting question. And that question is, um, is your financial advisor fee-based or based on a percentage? Um, so before I get into it, I just ask that you take a moment, if this is helpful in any way, to subscribe to the channel, like the channel, and share the channel with your friends because this information is information that's really designed to help people make the best decision for themselves and their family. But let's get into it. So I had a subscriber who sent me an email and asked the question, is your financial advisor fee-based or do you pay them on a percentage? And so I'd like to share with you the six things we took into account as we started looking for a financial advisor. And I think six uh, is the most important. And I have a bonus snippet at the end that I'll share with you that I think will help codify all of this into a usable format for you. Um, so let's get into it. The things we took into account, um, number one, uh, consider the source of the referral. Most of the time when you are looking for a financial advisor, think about where that information comes from. Our financial advisor was referred to us by our trust attorney. We were putting together a living trust, kind of like a will. Uh, we could talk about that in a, another episode, but uh, if you if you want to hear something about trusts or, or wills and things like that and how we did that, uh, leave a note in the comments or you could send me an email like the other subscriber did. But we went to our trust attorney and asked our trust attorney, who is, do you have any referrals? Because we wanted to make sure that all of our stuff had some connectivity to it. So whoever's going to be managing our final affairs doesn't have a hard time finding where everything is. Uh, but there's a bunch of other sources. Sometimes you could just do an internet uh, Google search. Um, I don't tend to go towards Google searches too often because sometimes it's going to be people that are just advertising and you don't get a good sense of how they, uh, how they operate or how they move, as they say. Um, or you could get a, another good source of referrals, which I've helped people with is getting a referral from somebody that's worked with the person before, because then you get a pretty good idea of who it is that you're working with. Uh, next is the advisor style. Um, many of us don't like people just telling us what to do and going into things blindly, but some of us like to have some very structured guidance. Uh, what we found is financial advisors take the whole spectrum. Uh, you have some that are really living vicariously through you and using you as the vehicle for their investments. Others are completely hands off and, and sometimes you can feel abandoned in that type of situation. So it's about finding the right balance for you with the information that you're trying to, uh, to, to, to get or your, the, the way you want to, you want to invest. Uh, the next one is aligning your goals with the goals of your financial advisor, making sure the two of you are in alignment. Um, again, it, this goes hand in hand with style. Sometimes financial advisors have certain goals that they have for their clients and, and it might be to make the most money it might be to make the to, to be the most aggressive to uh beat the market you, you just never know and so really sit down and talk about what your goals are Are your goals to retire your goals to pay for school is it all of the above or are there more to it is there more to it um our financial advisor was somebody that was uh, that took the knowledge that we had of investing and those types of things and really melds their own expertise into the into the process. So there's things that we know that we didn't know before. Um, number five, uh, you know, you look at the tools and resources that um, they have. Different financial advisors have access to different tools. Um, our tools, the tools that we use, are tools that uh, that model out our retirement that I could look today and see what our tax situation will likely be in 2029, 2030, 2040, whenever the time is. And there's a lot of tools and resources that help us see because for us, where we gain the, uh, the peace of mind with our retirement is being able to see the models and having the access to the financial advisor, um, being able to talk to our financial advisor when we want to talk to our financial advisor, as opposed to 
just meeting and structure times. Over the last three or four years, as you know, um, with COVID, with inflation, with changes in the interest rates and all of these different market dynamics, you can imagine there's been a lot of ad hoc phone calls that we've made to our financial advisor just to understand where we were. And in fact, it was some of those resources that helped codify in our minds the fact that we were going to be ready to retire early. So again, you want to look at what are the tools and resources that the financial advisor has. And I would I would stay away from just thinking boilerplate in terms of t uh, tools and resources, but I would think about <clears throat> what is it that I really want to know and what are those pieces of information or what are those tools that I like? Am I able to plug and play different numbers and so on into a tool to see different scenarios, which we can do with ours, and it's phenomenal. Um, and lastly, and this is the most important, uh, the bonus one or, that, I, that I mentioned, is peace of mind. When you're choosing your financial advisor, there's a lot of different, uh, I don't know, perspectives or, or thoughts or ways, and, and no one way to choose a financial advisor is better than any other, and there's in fact, there is just no one way to choose a financial advisor. But what it really comes down to above everything else is peace of mind. If you um, have peace of mind and you feel comfortable and you trust your financial advisor, then everything else is really secondary. Um, sometimes I'll give you an example. Our financial advisor is a percentage-based financial advisor. And I know there are a lot of different opinions around that but when you think about the length of our retirement and you think about today we can go in and we would be able to manage it just fine but we wouldn't necessarily be able to do that if uh you know as we get into it in to advanced ages and so what we want to have is somebody that is going to be on top of everything all the time with the tools and resources needed <clears throat> and so we decided to go with 1% because we figure if we continue to have constant access to the tools, it doesn't rely on us necessarily going in. And as I like to say, we jump over pennies for dollars, then we find ourselves in a, in a place where we feel better about it. Um, I, I remember our, one of our initial conversations was if we pay 1% but make 6%, then that's 5% net and somebody else has really done some of the work. And, and we've got a guided solution that the person really is involved and the group is really involved with, with helping us um, get through different types of times, sometimes the good times, sometimes the bad times. But the way our portfolio is performed, as I think many of ours have, just because of the market dynamics, uh, we haven't looked back. So, again, it comes down to peace of mind. How do you feel about the person? People are going to tell you a bunch of different things, but I think we all have a sense of what feels right for us. So as you, as you go back and you, and you take a look at the things we considered, um, again, we looked at um, the source of the referral, the style of the advisor, the alignment with the goals, the types of tools that they have, the types of resources they have access to, um, and, and really developing peace of mind. And just to touch back again on some of the resources, one of the things that our financial advisor was able to connect us with in terms of resources, uh, besides the electronic online tools, is they were also able to um, connect us with long-term care insurance. We're looking at our health insurance options and seeing what we need to do. It helped us understand that we didn't need life insurance because we had the assets to cover. So there's there's a lot of different things. But as you as you go back and you digest some of this information, one thing should stand out is that the terms were secondary. Peace of mind is the primary goal. When you go into retirement, it's not about micromanaging your life. It's not about micromanaging your funds. It's about peace of mind because you don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time worrying about how things are going. You just want to feel good about what you're doing. And you, you hire a financial advisor similarly to the way you hire any other uh, plumber. You know, as I like to say, when, you, when your plumbing goes out, who do you call? A plumber. When you have your roof goes out uh, or you get a leak, who do you call? You call a roofer. Um, if there's a big bad ghost in your neighborhood, who do you call? Ghostbusters. I mean, it's just one of those things. So look at hiring a financial advisor um, the same way. Look for the peace of mind. If you find the peace of mind, you'll be happy. So again, 
I'll, I'll stop now, but I do ask that if this information was helpful for you anyway, please, please, please subscribe to the channel so I know you're out there. Uh, feel free to share the channel with anybody you think might be able to benefit from the channel. And just like it if, if you like the video in any way. So on that note, have a good rest of your day, and we will talk soon.